In today's video, I'm going to take you through SPT, exactly what is holding SPT, how do you do it, and we're gonna actually do 15 minutes of SPT in this video, so let's get to it. For those of you that are new here, my name is Jake Kaminsky. I'm a two-time Olympic silver medalist in the sport of archery, and we're gonna make this channel a great resource to all types of archery, so if you haven't yet, hit that subscription button and the notification bell, that way you're notified every time a new video is uploaded. I'd appreciate it. Okay, so I have talked about SPT in the past. I've broken this down in discussion, but I've never actually done it on film before. So you could use this a bit of a uh, follow along type video, if you will. And I'm going to take you through how to do SPTs. And I'm also gonna explain a little bit more about it. So what you need for SPT is your regular bow and your finger tab and potentially a mirror. These full length body mirrors right here are really, really great and they're super cheap. They're a good resource to actually use in checking your form while doing SPT. It's extremely important to do this in front of a mirror if you haven't done it before, especially if you're working on some form changes because you wanna make sure you're maintaining proper form while doing this. So what is SPT and what does it stand for? It is an acronym. It stands for Severe Physical Torture. Not really, it actually stands for Specific Physical Training for Archery. And what we're gonna do in today's video is the holding version of SPT which basically you hold back your bow for a period of time, you rest, and then you hold your bow back again. You do that for a given amount of time, and then you're done. So what this is going to do is it's going to give you more strength in the sport of archery. I did this while I lived at the Olympic Training Center pretty much daily at the end of each training session to really build a ton of strength. It was rough, it was brutal, especially after shooting about 400 arrows that day, but it absolutely made me stronger. Eventually you can get to the point of where you can add a stretch band onto your bow, increasing your bow weight by 10 pounds or so, and making it a bit more challenging. So besides the mirror itself, your bow and your finger tab, what else do you need? Either a clock with a second hand, which I prefer because it's very easy to follow, or you can download a Tabata timer app. On this phone here, I have something that is called a Tabata timer. It's the first thing that comes up on the app store. And I'm going to quick set it up here. And what you want to do for SPT, is you want to hold a minimum of 15 seconds and a maximum of 30 seconds, somewhere in that window, and then you rest double your hold. So what I like to do, because I've done it in the past and used a second hand on a clock, I like to do it in 20 second intervals. I hold for 20 seconds, because if you go from noon to the four hand, that's 20 seconds, and then you rest until noon and hold until four, rest until noon and so on until you're done. I don't prefer doing 15 second holds because then you gotta rest 30 and then hold 15, rest 30, hold 15 and it's confusing. You miss your start and stop points, especially when you're talking to people or you're watching TV or whatever else you're doing. I've done this during horrible weather days to keep my physical fitness up. I've done it while traveling on the road just to keep fresh and doing it in front of the TV helps pass the time and makes it a bit less torturous. So I'm gonna set this one up here to have a exercise interval of 20 seconds and a rest interval of 40 seconds. And today's video, we're going to do it for 15 minutes. So I'm going to set the number of sets for 15 sets. So what will happen when I hit this play button down here? Starting your Tabata workout, get ready. It will give you a short warm up period that you can program in. Exercise. Time starts, get to full draw, hold until this is over, and follow the rest of the steps. Workout paused. Pretty straightforward, but before we do that, you actually absolutely 100% must warm up. This is something that not many people do all the time. I find warm up to be extremely important, and if I didn't do warm up, I'd really pay for it in the long run. So I'm gonna do just some basic arm circles to start, do five back, five front, and then I'll do five cross. Just basically trying to get the blood flow going so that way you're really not gonna be damaging any sort of muscles. Now, if I was just done shooting, I would say I'm warmed up and I'm ready to go. So it's not really necessary for myself to warm up after I've been shooting all day, but because I haven't shot at all today, I actually haven't shot it for a week, um, I need to do a bit of warm up to bring some blood flow into my shoulders. I like to just kind of move around. Just kind of get the cobwebs a bit uh, beaten up and removed from my body. 
Another thing that I love to do is passovers. It really helps just break up the fascial adhesions and try to get everything all opened up. And so what I'm doing is I'm taking, this is actually a blowgun, but you can take a broomstick and you wanna hold it about yay far apart. You can go further if you have less range of motion. Some people can go more narrow if they have a lot more flexibility, but I'm right about here. And what I'm doing is I'm keeping my shoulders down and passing over and going back and forth. And then sometimes I like to do circles with straight arms and get a little bit of clicking and grinding and pretty much take it through a range of motion that does not give me any sort of pain. And now I'm about to start breaking a sweat, mostly because I am dressed in layers because it's kind of cold down here in Florida. <clears throat> At least it's cold for Florida. I grew up in Buffalo, New York, so I know what cold is, but after you live down here for a long time, this is still cold. Just, you know, 45 degrees or so is still cold. So I'm gonna use my bare bow today and I'm gonna get my finger tab because you really need to protect your fingers. Otherwise, it definitely doesn't feel well. Before I get into it, I'm gonna kind of pull the bow back a couple times because 46 pounds or so is a lot of weight when you don't shoot a lot. So again, just kind of trying to get the blood flow going. And now that I'm roughly warmed up, I'm gonna start doing some SPT. As we're going through this, I'll talk to you about what I'm focusing on, what I'm looking for, what I'm seeing in the mirror, and a bit of challenges that may arise, uh, especially if you're choosing to do this along with me, because it does become challenging, especially as you start doing this much longer than 15 minutes. While I lived at the Olympic Training Center, in addition to shooting three to 500 arrows every day, we did about an hour of SPT as well. So it was a lot, a lot, a lot of work. I wouldn't necessarily recommend that unless you're really wanting to go to the Olympic Games. And even still then, I wouldn't recommend doing any of this without first talking to your doctor to make sure that everything is good to go. So now that I'm warmed up, we're gonna start this. I'm gonna hit the start button and now I'll place the phone over here so you can see the countdown timer along with me. We can get through this together or suffer through it together depending on how we look at it. Starting your Tabata workout, get ready. So I always take my normal stance. Exercise. You really should be at full draw by the time the timer starts. Because I use Coach Lee's method, I transfer and then I hold. And now I'm holding my exact form. And I'm checking in the mirror to make sure I can still see my alignment. I'm really trying to keep my structure. Rest. Now I can let down. Whew. As we go through this, I'll really start enjoying the rest periods. Um, what I'm doing here in the mirror is I'm pointing at the mirror and then kind of rotating to check and see different positions to check my alignment, make sure my shoulder's down, just kind of going through everything to make sure that I'm maintaining my form. Because what's really, really important in SPT is really trying to make sure that your form is maintained because you really wanna train in what you want to shoot like. So as the time comes down, gives me a warning. Exercise. Now, yes, I am pulling back with a bare bow and using my recurve style anchor. It's just comfortable and easy. On the next one, I will go to my bare bow anchor, which is definitely going to be a little harder. But I'm just sitting here looking, I'm making sure I see my elbow behind the string. Rest and really just trying to hit my marks to make sure that I'm building strength in the exact same way that I shoot in. <clears throat> so if this is too easy for you, what we used to do in the past, I don't have a stretch band handy here, thank God, but what you can do is you put a stretch band, you wrap it around your sight window, you put the stretch band up over your bow, you have the stretch band wrap around your sight window and around your string, and you can hold on to it much like an arrow does, put it right where your knocking point is, and you've got an extra 10 pounds of draw weight. Exercise. So now I'm here in my bare bow anchor, checking my string alignment, looking at my elbow position. I'm rotating 
when I rotate like that, if you were the mirror, this is what I would see. But I can still look at you with my eyes and rotate my body to see the rest yes. of my positioning to make sure I'm maintaining good, good form. I'm not leaning back, I'm not jutting my hip out. <laughs> In this position, I can see if I'm arching my back or not. I can see my alignment. <clears throat> On this next one, I'll show you a trick how I was taught at the Olympic Training Center to check our alignment and to make sure that we have good alignment. What we would do is we'd take a piece of tape and we'd put it right about here. Or if you're lucky and you had USA on your back like this, you would want to see the letter A while at full draw. Because if I'm here, my scapula is gonna stick out further. Exercise. And now, I'm not sure if you can see it. Let me check in the mirror. I can just see USA if I'm pointing at myself in the mirror. So that's showing me that I can see my back scapula, which is showing me that I do have good alignment. Rest. And as this goes on, it's getting harder and harder. We've only done this four times and it gets tough. So again, we're doing this for 15 minutes. It's, it's a rough rule of thumb that one hour of SVT is equal to about two to 300 arrows, depending on how much draw weight you're using. The rough rule of thumb is about 200 arrows equivalent. So you get a lot of strength built in a relatively short period of time. And I'm sure going to be feeling this tomorrow. Exercise. And doing this in the mirror, I can check and go through everything. Are my knuckles at a 45 degree angle? How are my fingernails? I can see my ring fingernail, which is totally fine, but I can't see my index or middle finger, which is absolutely ideal according to Coach Lee's method. So all of these things I'm checking, just checking, 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 hitting all my marks, making sure I'm maintaining my structure. I'm doing my best to keep my alignment. It's challenging, but again, you really can't replace this type of exercise. <clears throat> exercise. Go back to my recurve anchor. So much easier to hold the bow back at full draw this way. I can just get into better alignment. A little bit better structure this way. But if you're shooting bare bow, go ahead and use your normal anchor that you normally use. Rest. At the beginning of this day, I wasn't really planning on having a workout. <laughs> My wife suggested to do this video um, and I have her to thank for that. She has some really good ideas for some of these videos and video content. So if you have any suggestions, don't hesitate to comment below. I'm always open to, to different ideas. Because it's been a while since I was in your shoes, but I was there. I do remember it, but there are a lot of things that you can forget over time. Exercise. Totally normal to breathe, because the hold here at 20 seconds long is a very long period of time, so to hold your breath for that long, not ideal. I can tell you that talking through this makes it much, much harder. This is definitely really, really, really good. Um, I prefer doing it with this because I don't have to pay attention to it. It gives me warnings and all of that. But if I wanted to, mid SPT with a second hand on a clock, I could switch to 30 seconds on and a minute off, uh, which is tough. Uh, I usually would start my session with that um, and then switch to 20 on, 40 off. Or maybe I'd hold for 30 so I could take a water break, like I'm gonna in between this next set. Exercise. So I still hit all my main points. I still have proper set, setup, loading anchor transfer, and then now I'm holding 
I'm holding here at transfer, really focusing on maintaining my back tension, keeping as much of my tension in my back as I can, even though I'm shaking because I'm getting tired. Really just struggling and really, really pushing to maintain a good structure. We're already halfway done. We're one over halfway done, which is excellent. But again, doing this while on the road, family vacation time, you know, when you're in lockdown, quarantine, whatever, because of COVID going on, this is a great exercise to maintain your strength in archery. I'm gonna hold exercise. a little long on this next one. So I'm gonna hold for an extra three. Hopefully you were following the timer properly, unlike myself here. This is also a good time to do some visualization as well. Rest. Feeling like I'm really strong and when I go to let go, it just drops right in the middle. Whew. <clears throat> so while I did my level four coaching exam uh, with Coach Lee, and I don't remember where it was, it was quite a long time ago, I did SPT for an hour every night, but I also did uh, Form Master, or used the uh, Shot Trainer, actually, for quite some time while I was, uh, Exercise. while I was there, because I couldn't shoot, and I think there was Indoor Nationals relatively soon after that, so I had to maintain my strength and uh, maintain my conditioning to, be ready to go when the tournament happens. So doing this type of thing oh, is absolutely a great way to build your strength. Now, if you shoot regularly, it won't be as challenging as it seems that it is for me at the moment. I don't shoot enough. I really don't shoot at all. <laughs> you know, what you see in these videos lately, that's about as often as I am shooting. But uh, I am feeling this SPT. But if I did this a couple times a week, I'd be back and shooting shape in no time. Exercise. So again, just really maintain structure. <clears throat> Some things that you can focus on too, in addition to what I've already talked about. Maintaining that balance of power, 50-50. Whatever I'm pulling back with, I'm really reaching forward with equally. I'm trying to maintain my structure. I'm trying to do everything that I can that I normally do when I'm expanding, when I'm trying to set that clicker off. I'm not actually moving, but I'm feeling that type of power, that type of exertion that I normally do when I'm trying to set the clicker off. It's just an another way to train that into your system. Exercise. Now this starts to get pretty challenging too on your fingers. A thicker tab may help. Um, some Coban wrapped around your fingers. I'll put a link in the description below to Coban if you're not familiar with what that is. Oh. Oh. I mean, it definitely starts to get pretty challenging on your fingers. I have no shooting calluses anymore. So you can see all the blood is uh, squished out of my fingers. But that's all stuff, you know, all this training leads you to becoming a better archer. Even my hand showing the bow grip line on there pretty strongly. <laughs> Three left. Exercise. I'm 
really reaching with the front bow arm and the bow hand trying to make sure I have my tricep engaged my lat engaged just feeling what it feels like Rest. oh Whew, it starts to get tough I'll tell you after an hour it's brutal this 15 minutes is gonna feel like an hour to me <laughs> Two left. I'll tell you what we used to do at the training center we, when we couldn't maintain our form through the entire minimum 15 second hold. Here in a second. Exercise. So what we used to do is we'd have the coaches would be watching. Coach Lee would come over here and adjust our form. He'd say, oh, your shoulder's a little low, okay. Or a little high, I mean, and adjust that. So he'd be working on form, but he would notice if we weren't maintaining our form, not just being able to hold the bow back, but maintaining the form. Rest. If we weren't maintaining the form, whew, we'd have to put our bow down, run a lap around the entire, We'd have to put our bow down, run to 90 meters and back, which ended up being about 130 meters because we were far behind the shooting line. Then we'd have to pick up our bow again. After you missed it three times in a row, I believe two or three times in a row, you were allowed to pick up a lighter bow. Very, very rarely did that happen because after doing all this, you really don't want to run 300 meters quick because they wouldn't accept a jog. Last pull Exercise. here. Really just going for that feeling that I feel when I'm actually shooting. Trying to maintain my tension and direction. Trying to maintain my structure, maintain my form. It's really, really challenging here. Rest. Oh. oh. I'm taking my finger tab off. So that is 15 minutes of SPT. I'm really feeling it. I'm gonna go inside and make Work sure make sure I have some recovery. Really make sure I get enough hydration today to flush out the muscles because you know that is an extreme amount of work in a very, very short period of time. Again, that 15 minutes is easily equivalent to about 50 arrows, easily. You know, due to the amount of time that you're holding your bow back you're doing about 50 arrows worth of workload in 15 minutes. It is not easy. It is not easy to do with your real bow. Again, I would recommend absolutely 100% doing it in front of a mirror. So that way you can see what you're doing real time. See that you're maintaining your form, your structure, your alignment, all of the important things that we really strive for in the sport of archery. And if you can do that easily for 15 minutes, don't be afraid to extend that to 20 minutes or 30 minutes or longer. I wouldn't really do it more than an hour. Don't really see the need. Um, you know, if you're kinda stuck only doing that and not having a target to shoot at, you can absolutely do that for a little bit longer um, or potentially breaking that up into two sessions. It will maintain your archery strength and your archery form, especially if you're doing it in front of a mirror. And it will absolutely help you get some strength. So that way, if you're really choosing to, you go up in bow weight or just shoot your normal, regular bow with easier form and be able to do it a lot more comfortably, repeatedly, time after time after time. Hey, thanks for watching. If you like this video, consider hitting the subscription button and the notification bell, as well as the like button. I would appreciate it. Also, please consider supporting my channel if you head to my website, jakekaminski.com. There'll be info and links on Patreon, apparel, books and equipment sales, PayPal donate button, a PO box to send things to. And above all else, please share this video because there's no better advertising than word of mouth.